It's interesting to see how a concept can change or be repurposed with the passage of time. To me, the mobile market is one such example of this. At first, it was a new frontier for gaming, a new and exciting platform for new concepts and spin-offs like Epic Games' own Infinity Blade. Now, it's just a cesspool of grind-heavy games and traps that desperately rely on microtransactions just so the player can see a modicum of progress. But this change in the mobile market also brought with it the proliferation of another concept that still maintains a great deal of potential and promise for the future, free to play. So to cap off 2018, I decided to take a look at some free to play titles and to also see if there's anything worth the time, effort, and maybe some money from this part of gaming, specifically from the PC and console platforms. So to kick off this showcase, I'm going to be taking a look at an MMO that I've had interest in since it was first announced, Star Wars The Old Republic. <laughs> Developed by Bioware and published by EA for PC, I was first drawn to the Old Republic for the same reason as many others. Knights of the Old Republic, which I played the hell out of back in high school. So news of a new game, MMO or not, that was going to be Kodor 3 was more than enough to get me revved up for it like a horse being let out to stud. However, anyone who's been following me for a while will know my history of limited internet access and lack of a decent gaming PC. So I wasn't able to give this game a go till two or three years ago, at least. And my first impression of the Old Republic was like eating a fistful of saltpeter. I created my first character, a Sith assassin named Aldordan, and set foot upon the ancient Sith homeworld of Korriban, and immediately I was swept up with nostalgic memories of setting through the Valley of the Dark Lords in KOTOR 2. And almost as fast as those happy memories came, they were immediately dashed across the plasticine rocks of the Old Republic. As soon as I was able to explore the starting area and get a good look around, I knew this wasn't the successor I was expecting. I won't say the visuals for both KOTOR games have held up well after all these years, but I I found them to be far more stimulating to look at than this. The striking colours and flat textures make the environments look more like toy sets than actual landscapes, and when combined with the reality that the zones are static rather than reactive, it makes everything feel inanimate, as if it was never alive to begin with. At least this doesn't apply to the characters, but due to the visuals and animations which look like they were touched up animations from the original games, characters look more like they're from Toy Story rather than in addition to an epic space opera. I refuse to live a, a lesser life. Finish me. I will not accept mercy. But of course, this is a free-to-play title, so what about monetization? Well, as you know, EA has a bit of a reputation for aggressive and anti-consumer practices in their games, and it's still the case here. This doesn't mean you need to cough up cash just in order to progress, they at least showed some restraint here, unlike with the new Battlefront. But they do go out of their way to inconvenience free players into either spending cash or into getting a subscription. One full character progression past a certain level? One access to full cosmetic customization? Want more convenient fast travel? One access to your storage, which the game says you'll get once you also get your ship? Screw you and pay us for these privileges. Beyond this bullshittery to push you into subscription, monetization is based primarily around buying things like cosmetics and mounts. But the inconvenience put on the free players are far more likely to annoy to the point of quitting than subscribing. Now anyone who watched my MMO showcase will know my opinion on tab targeting combat. I think it's shit, and unfortunately Bioware chose to use it for the Old Republic. Tab targeting and other combat systems that rely on auto attacking or universal cooldowns, to me, create a disconnect between the player and the action, making it feel like my influence over fights is minimal at best and non-existent at worst. But to give the Old Republic some credit in this area, enemies in later zones are actually quite challenging and do demand that the player think in the heat of the moment. And character progression is quite robust, so you can personalize your character's class into something that is more specialized for certain encounters. Now believe it or not, the Old Republic is packed with content to see and do other than exploring its zones in PvE or PvP. One of the other things you can do is space combat, which could be considered amazing 
if it was still 1998. Space missions are just a ripoff of Star Fox with your ship on rails and enemies flying back to attack. Except here, it's worse. Because there's just too much stuff that has the same colour palette so everything blends together into visual clutter. So it's easy to lose track of where enemies are and just end up failing the missions all because you were unable to keep track of something. There's also dedicated PvP in the form of war zones where Republic and Imperial players can duke it out head to head, but I wasn't able to give it a go. When I tried, I ended up waiting in a queue for almost almost an entire hour and gave up on trying it out. Closest I got to checking it out was when some other player challenged me to a duel on Korriban, and what I saw wasn't particularly fun. I'm sure the real PvP experience has more meat to it over the space combat, but considering my distaste for the game's combat, I don't think it's something I could critique without some negative bias if I was able to give it a go. Now, I know it sounds like I'm just bashing on this game for most of this video, but that's because I've saved its one absolute strength for last. The story. I'm not joking, as much of a shadow of its former self Bioware is looking like each day, The Old Republic still shows the studio has talent as storytellers. The Sith Inquisitor story had my character prove himself worthy to be an apprentice, serve and surpass his master, gain great power to defeat a rival, and at the end take his rightful place as a member of the Dark Council. The one authority in the Empire second only to the Sith Emperor himself. And that's only one story. The base game has seven other the stories to experience, and if nothing else, gives the base experience a great deal of value for free. Plus, if I ever spend any money on this game, it'll be for the expansions. Not only so I can see the stories they have in store, but also so I can continue Alderdan's own story as a Dark Lord of the Sith. As far as my experience with MMOs go, The Old Republic isn't one of my better ones, but I still found myself coming back to it for one thing, its story and story alone. But while that may have been enough to keep me playing, I can see other people who aren't that interested in narrative abandoning it, something that will not be helped by EA's monetization and boring combat. It may not be the Kodor 3 we all wanted, but glimpses of such greatness managed to shine through time after time.